Tonight, a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News, an elite group of New York's bravest in action. When disaster strikes and the scene still isn't even safe, these rescue medics rush in, putting their own lives at risk. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einiger has the exclusive look. They dig their way through the tightest of spots. Anybody in here? Risking their lives. Can anybody hear my voice? Hunting for signs of someone else's. Do you have a pulse? I tell them that help is here, that they're not alone. Going down. They rappel down buildings. Sir, are you okay? Dangling upside down when mangled scaffoldings mangle limbs. Here they are in a situation where they think it's the last moment on earth. And here we are trying to convince them that that's not going to be the last moment that they have on this earth. You could call them the most elite paramedics in the world. Juan Henriquez and Don Fife among the 104 rescue medics of the FDNY. He's semi-conscious at this point. They train for the most complicated of rescue. You okay? Before firefighters can shore up a scene to make it safe, these are the guys who go right in to treat the patient at nearly any cost. It's the first thing that they tell us in class is that if, uh, if you're not willing to go into a situation that is not stable, then you need to get up and walk out. About twice a year, the rescue medics come here to the FDNY's training facility on Randall's Island to go through simulations to hone their skills. But almost every day, they see things like this in real life. Like in March, when rescue medics braved chest-deep mud to treat a worker trapped while building the Second Avenue subway. Or in 2008, when a massive crane crushed a walk-up building in Midtown. It was Juan Henriquez who administered aid to a resident whose legs had been crushed. They will always put themselves out uh, right to the edge for anyone. Captain Lewis Cook runs the rescue medic program, which exists in part because of something they call the smiling death. When muscles are crushed, they release lethal toxins into the blood which can kill a victim once he's free. If somebody's extricated, they're happy to be out and will die a day to three days later. It's kind of sad, you know, it's, uh, they, they have hope and then it gets taken away. Rescue medics are trained to recognize the condition and treat it on the spot. No response. The fire department used federal grants to kick off the program in 2006. Since then, it's more than doubled to 11 specially equipped ambulances. Last year alone, they responded to more than two dozen confined space rescues like this, and they're constantly training for more. If we can get in there and all you're walking away with is a, a cut or an abrasion on your arm or your leg, then it's a good day for everybody. Ready to pull you to safety from the next disaster on Randall's Island. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Josh Oniger, Channel 7, Eyewitness News.